Let's explore how to use TypeScript and GraphQL side by side. In this video, we're building a project with TypeScript and GraphQL. So what we'll be doing is we'll take a GraphQL schema from a Steps and GraphQL API and transform the schema into TypeScript types. And these types are something we can use inside a React or JavaScript or TypeScript application, whatever you like. So what we'll be doing is just take a GraphQL API and generate GraphQL types, or actually TypeScript types, based on the types in GraphQL. But first, let's compare the two type systems. So both GraphQL and TypeScript rely on the type system. So they both have type systems that we want to compare. So if you look on the left, left side, you can see a TypeScript type system. You can see we have a type called product. And this type has an ID, a title, thumbnail, price. It has some relational types like category and review. And then on the right side, you can see the GraphQL types. And these might look familiar because we're all using uppercases. So you can see we have an uppercase uh, int, string, float. So where in TypeScript you have a number, you actually have two ways to define a number in GraphQL, which are float and int. We also have Boolean, which you can't see on the screen, but it is there. A string ID, which is also a string type actually. And then we have relationships, of course, with other types. So in TypeScript, you have basic types, everyday types, and in GraphQL, we call these scalar types. Except for the relations, of course, because these are just custom types you define yourself. If you can see, they both have basic scalar types. So these are the types that are always there. They're built in. In GraphQL, there are five. And then, of course, they can also relate to other types. So you can see categories can have a relationship with category. The only way you define an array is a little bit different than you would see for TypeScript. And then finally, everything in TypeScript is required, while everything in GraphQL is optional by default. And that's why, if you want to make something optional in TypeScript, you need to use the question mark. While the other way around, in GraphQL, if you want to make something required, you need to use an exclamation mark. So these are just the small differences you see in both type systems. So now we know the differences, let's go to a GraphQL application. So in here, I created a small React application that is using a Steps and GraphQL API. If you look at the application, it looks like this. It's just a Hacker News clone. And then it's using an API from Stepsend, which you can see here. The data it's getting is just data about articles, such as the ID, title, and some other things, probably I see text, I see more things we can actually query here. So we have a list of articles coming from a Hacker News clone. And we'll be using this GraphQL API to transform it into TypeScript types. Because inside our application, we want to be using TypeScript. Of course, we can introspect the schema by using the doc section inside Graphical. If we go back to our code, you can see this is now the article component. So this is the component that's rendered whenever I click on an article. So let me try and find a nice one. Let's just click on GraphQL. Let's see if we can find a cool one. So should you still use Learn GraphQL? Well, this is a nice title. So the component that's get rendered here is a component that we'll see here. And as you see, it's just JSX. So let me start by renaming it to TSX and see whatever we should be doing to make this thing work. You can see we have Apollo client. Make this a bit smaller. And then you can see we have all these variables that we're using, like data article, data title. We want to make sure that these are using TypeScript types. Also for us, params ID, you can see it's a string or undefined because, well, this one is already returning the type, which is easy. But an example are loading indicators, a Boolean or errors in Apollo error. But our data, it isn't typed yet. So what you want to do, you want to give a type to this one. But not like this, because it's not how you define types. So either we define it like this, we can say something like loading is a Boolean. We could say error is type any because it doesn't really matter. And then we could type the data, right? We could say data is any, and this should be fine. And actually it gives an error because, well, this should be something else. And then probably other types should have a different meaning as well, because we don't really have the meaning that they set. So how you 
type things in Apollo is by adding them behind the use query, like a generic. So this will be the return type. It should be data. We could say it's data article. And then we could say it has an ID. It has a title. So what else are we using? We're using a body HTML. So body underscore HTML, which is a string. And then let's see if we have typed everything. So this is closed, that is closed. Probably need to use commas here instead. And then probably we need another closing thingy there. And then if we would go here, you can see it doesn't exist because well, still something is missing. So data, article, let me see, we probably need to get rid of this. Then I'm not really sure why I'm having this error. So yeah, this works now, this compiles, and now we have defined the types for these things. But it's not something we want. I can see I still have an error downstream. Let me see what it is. We've importing something that we're not using. Well, let's just get rid of it. And we should be having green check marks here now. But you can see this is quite a hassle. So I need to type my article, my title, my body HTML. But what if I want to add something else here? So maybe I want to get the user in there because I can query the user. So let me say h3 is data article user dot username. Let me save this. Well, you can see the type isn't defined because I didn't define my type here. If I would go to my query, which you can find here, uh, you can see I'm actually getting, I'm not getting the username, so let me try and do this, so user, username. So this one gives me the username, except I will get an error here because, well, I didn't really type the user. So let me try and do that, so user is username. And it's a string. So if I save this, it should be fine. If I go to my app, you can see the username being loaded. But still, what I'm doing here is all manual creation of all the types. And this is something I don't want to do. In TypeScript and GraphQL, you work together in an app like this. You don't want to keep typing your types every single time. Instead, you want to use a library called GraphQL Code Generator, which can help us to generate the TypeScript types automatically. So let's use GraphQL code generator to generate the types for us. I already set up a YAML file, which links to our GraphQL API from Stepsen. And I also set up TypeScript operations. So this means it will create the operation, it will create the types for the operations I have to find in this file right here. So let me now run the code generator by running mpx uh, GraphQL code gen. And this will start taking the schema from this GraphQL API that we have to find here, it will take the operations that are here, so these operations, and then it will create the other things. You can see I have an error uh, because maybe I have something unsupported. Just delete this because it gives me an error. Probably my GraphQL API isn't up to date with everything I have in operations. So let me regenerate, and everything's working fine now. Just make sure we save this because maybe I break something. Uh, if I now go to article, Instead of getting the article, instead of typing it like this, what I can do now is just get rid of this, and then I should be finding the type in my generated types.ts file. We'll be going here, I can see get article by ID query. So this is my query. Um, so this is actually the type I want to link up here get article by ID query. Uh, or maybe not. Let me get back. Is this the query I'm using? So get articles by ID query. Yeah, I think it is. Make sure I import it. So I'm importing it. I'm linking it here. Still, I get an error. So let me see why. Object is possible null or undefined. Simple, use it like this. Make sure that we do the checks because in GraphQL, we already learned everything is optional. Save this, it would still work and everything is strongly typed. 
And the cool part is even if I go to operations and I would be adding new fields here, I can just rerun re the generator and it will generate the new GraphQL types for me. Or actually, the new TypeScript types for my GraphQL API. So not the GraphQL types, it will generate the TypeScript types. And of course, there's much more I can do because in the code generator, I can also automatically create a strongly typed hook for me. So let me see why this is interesting because in here, I actually want to type my variables as well, right? So what should we do and get article by ID query variables. This would be generating my query variables uh, types as well. See, and I have an error here because probably this needs to be checked as well. Could be optional. Uh, maybe it's optional like this as well. So let me see, ID is undefined. So actually ID should be defined somehow. So we should probably say it's this. If you don't define an ID, it should be an empty string. So TypeScript is already helping me catch bugs in my code. And if I would run this, it will still work of course. So I can just run my application. Let's see what TypeScript says, because probably this component is now type safe. I would be going back to my application. Just a couple more seconds until it actually started. Start development server. You can see this page is still loading. Still has everything in it. There's the title, there's the username. But something it doesn't have, which is kind of annoying to me, is I still need to define my queries and my query types every time. So all the return types should be types, all the variables. Instead, what I can also be doing is close this. I'll go back to the code generator. I can be using the plugin TypeScript React Apollo. And if I'd save this, actually make sure I don't have this faulty thing in there. If I would now rerun, oh, rerun the code generator, it will already create a hook for me that's type safe, meaning that I have less code and I have an easier looker application. So I run npm start again, go back to article. So instead of importing use query, I would now be importing something else. So what I would be importing is a hook called, well, I'm not sure what it's called. It's in my generated file. So use, use get articles by ID query. And the only thing I need to do is pass my variables to it, which are these ones. And then I can just close this up, uh, make sure that I fix this annoying thing where this can be an empty string as well, and then save it. So now I already have a type save hook. You can see I no longer need to define the types myself and everything is safely typed here as well. You can see the types are being imported for my GraphQL schema. Um, I'm beginning some errors because I will need to delete the things I'm not using. I'm not using these type definitions anymore. And I'm also not importing use query anymore because it's already being imported for me. And also the query itself, which I have my operations file, can also be deleted. And if I save this, I have a type safe React application. And I can do this for every other file uh, right inside my app. And this is just only the getting started for using TypeScript together with GraphQL, because there's so much more you can do. So make sure, if you enjoyed this video, to press the like button below and also subscribe to our channel, because we'll be releasing weekly videos on how to build cool things with GraphQL.